Hey guys, it's James Daynard with Heaton Daynard Real Estate and Project RE. You can follow me on J Dane Flips on Instagram, and we are back on Bigger Pockets. And today we're going to talk about costs for rough ins and how you can plan accordingly for your next rehab project. So, what is a rough in? A rough in is your co core mechanical upgrades of old buildings or any kind of project that you need to understand for you to become a good investor and optimize how you can maximize your next deal by knowing what those costs are. So what we're gonna go over is we're gonna go over in depth the, co the core cost for rough -ins. So what is the core cost? Your typical core cost for rough -ins are gonna be asbestos removal, demo, electrical, plumbing, drainage, HVAC, siding, framing, and insulation. We're gonna give you an in-depth analysis of what these things are, how much they cost, and how you can prepare accordingly so you know when the contractor opens up your next walls what that should actually cost you, not just what the contractor says it should cost. Only problem, I bought it from a fake seller. James Danner just walked over to my desk. <laughs> If you skip the first three steps, that's the easiest way to lose money. So before you buy your next project, you want to make sure that you understand the cost and you understand how things need to be installed so you can have good dialogue with your contractor and budget accordingly and to also make sure your contractor's not charging you too much. Remember, as an investor, it's ultimately up to you to understand the cost and implement the plan. So to understand these things are very fundamental. So the first cost you want to understand is your demo cost. It can have a massive variance in your demo and what that's actually going to cost you. The big variances that you need to look out for is A1 trash removal. How much debris is being left on your site? When we're accounting for this, we actually account for per dumpster load. We account for about $1,000 per dumpster based on what we visually are seeing. Remember to check the hidden bushes in, in the hidden little treasures in the yard so you can account for those as well. When we're doing the interior, if we're taking it down to studs, we're looking at really two different factors. The major factors are whether it's drywall or plaster. The big difference is, is the weight of the actual materials. Drywall weighs about half as much as plaster, so that's going to affect our dumpster loads. So when we're planning to demo a house down to studs that has drywall, we factor two bucks a square foot, and if it has plaster, we increase that to three dollars a square foot. By making these little adjustments and visually looking at this, this allows us to budget accordingly for our next project. The second thing that we want to account for when budgeting for roughens is asbestos and toxic removal. That could be lead-based paint removal, it could be asbestos removal, any kind of environmental impact. So things that we always do before demoing that site is we get an asbestos survey. This costs us about $2,000 to have a company come out, they pull all the samples from the property, they send it in a report, and then they're gonna give us back a survey that tells us what to remove and not to remove. It's very hard to budget for asbestos removal without the survey because the survey dictates what you actually have to remove out. When budgeting for asbestos removal, it can cost anywhere between $1,000 all the way up to $100,000 depending on what you actually need to do. So getting your survey prior to making your budget is fundamentally important because that tells you what you have to take out and not take out. When we're demoing a house down to studs that has full of asbestos, typically that's gonna cost us about five to six bucks a square foot for the whole square footage of the home. The next item that we wanna budget for is our electrical. When we're buying these old 1920s homes, a lot of times we have to figure out how much rewiring work we have to do. So when you do your next walkthrough, make sure that you're noting your outlets, your panels, your meter, your mass. Those are all gonna be hints for you on what you need to check for and how to budget accordingly. In these old 1920 homes, like the home that we're gonna go check out in a few, we already knew that all the systems were old, so we budget accordingly for electrical. So what does that mean? The cost for our electrical, based on historical pricing with our electricians and based on what our electricians are actually telling us the cost will be, we budget $3 a square foot for Romex. So if the house is 2,000 square feet and we gotta run just all new Romex through, that's a cost of $6,000. We budget for a new electrical panel. The cost is $2,000 for the panel. The mast costs up to $1,200. And then we budget $1.50 a square foot for all the plugs and switches. And for electrical fixtures, we budget $50 a fixture. So for every ceiling mount light they gotta put in, the electrician gets paid $50. By knowing these allowances in install rates, this allows us to give us a very good performa on our budget that gives us very little variance in what our electricians are actually bidding it for, for what we're prepared for. Next is plumbing. Plumbing, we bid the exact same way that we do electrical. 
We take our historical cost, we're talking to our tradesmen, and then they give us our install rates. So for PEX plumbing, where we're ripping out all the plumbing and running all new lines, that costs us an average of $3 a square foot for the whole structure. For concrete demo, if we need to add a bathroom in the basement, we trench it all out. That costs us about $500 a linear, square, a linear foot. Injector pumps cost $1,500. That's where the sewer line may be above where your bathrooms are, and they can run the plumbing up to the sewer line and take it away from the property. Each plumbing fixture we pay our plumbers is $50 a fixture. So for every valve they're putting in, every faucet, that's $50 per cost. So roofing, there's two major items that you need to budget accordingly in your roofing. One is the sheeting. Is the sheeting in good shape or does it need to re be repaired or replaced all the way around? That typically costs us $100 per square to install all new plywood. The second is what kind of materials are you putting on top? Uh, it could be a 30-year comp roof, which that costs us $275 a square to install. It could be a metal roof that we put on our higher end flips, and that costs us $600 per square. And if we're doing a presidential roof for another higher end home, but maybe with just a different style, that costs us $500 per square foot. So as we understand these costs for not only just to repair the roof, but also to upgrade the roof, that helps us evaluate our budget and evaluate our comparables, so it gives us what we actually need to budget accordingly for drainage there's two major items in your drainage that you should be looking for one is your sump pumps and drains do you need to install one do you need to keep your basement dry is there sections of your yard that you need to pump uphill the typical cost for our sump pump is fifteen hundred dollars we also have to install either french drains on the exterior or oftentimes in seattle we have a lot of moisture so we do interior drains inside the basement and that's typically going to cost us about ten dollars per linear foot so by walking the next potential investment, we can take all our measurements, we know exactly what it costs us per linear foot based on those measurements, and that's gonna kick out our budget to the correct number. Then we also have to install either French drains on the exterior, or oftentimes in Seattle, we have a lot of moisture, so we do interior drains inside the basement, and that's typically gonna cost us about $10 per linear foot. So by walking the next potential investment, we can take all our measurements, we know exactly what it costs us per linear foot based on those measurements, and that's gonna kick out our budget to the correct number. The next cost we're performing is framing and seismic upgrades. This is actually one of the most difficult things to budget for because a lot of times you can't see inside those walls. So what we do is based on our experience, we can kind of budget accordingly based on what we've already done. So a lot of times in a 1920s house, I know that those are built over 100 years ago, the framing is going to be a little bit undersized. It's going to be framed in two by fours. The wood's going to be a little bit older. So I'm typically typically going to need to budget for a full reframe on this property. That's going to cost me about $8 per square foot for the whole framing of the property. If I'm budgeting for a new construction, I actually budget about $32 a square foot for the labor and materials. So based on what you're framing and actually the year built, that's going to cause you for a huge variance of what you need to plan accordingly for. The next is seismic. Seismic is required, at least in our local Pacific Northwest area, especially in the city of Seattle, they require us to upgrade buildings to new code and they wanna make sure that they're stable for any kind of potential earthquake down the road. So many of these old homes that we buy need to actually be seismically upgraded and bolted back down to the foundation. This is almost required in anything that we take drywall off all the walls. So once we take it down to studs, the city's gonna require us to do that. We know this by talking to our cities and then educating us on what they're gonna require. Seismic typically costs us about $3 per square foot to upgrade the building. So if we have a 3,000 square foot house, that's gonna cost about $9,000 to bolt it all down. Next is HVAC. How are you gonna heat and cool your house? So typically when we're budgeting for $3 a square foot, that's gonna get us flex ducting or metal ducting, but that's gonna get all the ducts where they need to be to get all the heat or cooling airs in the right locations. A furnace costs us $2,500 or $3,000 for gas because it costs a little bit more. Each hot water tank costs us about 1,200. And then for gas piping, which is oftentimes overlooked, it runs us about 10 to $15 per linear foot. So as you're walking your site, you can kind of guesstimate your, uh, the locations you need to run it and then run your budget accordingly. Don't forget to also budget for venting and bathroom fans. Typically for a kitchen vent, it costs us about $200 and for a bathroom vent, it costs us about $100 each. So by looking at all these small little costs, it helps narrow down your budget. Next is insulation. How are you gonna keep this heat inside the house? 
So things to look for when you're budgeting for insulation is what kind of do, do you need to install? There's two main types that we're really putting in these homes. We either have our basic wall-in insulation, which is the Roll Pink Panther style insulation. That costs us about $4 per square foot. When we're cleaning out a crawl space, it costs us about $1,200 to put all the vapor barrier down and about another $1,200 to insulate all the floorboards. One thing that you don't want to uh, forget when you're looking at your insulation is where what's going on in your ceilings. If, if you have a drop down framed in ceiling, that makes it easy to blow in your insulation. That's not a very expensive cost. That's going to be about $1,200. But if you have vaulted ceilings, then you're going to have to upgrade to rigid, which is a high quality insulation, but it also is a very expensive option. If you're looking at a house that has vaulted ceilings, you need to budget almost 10 times the amount for the rigid amount. So if we're blowing in, in, uh, blowing in attic insulation, it's gonna cost us about 1,200. If it's rigid, it's actually gonna cost us anywhere between seven to $10,000 to install it. So budget accordingly. And lastly, one of the major items that you wanna account for is your siding. Many, many times in Seattle, we're buying old, old Craftsman homes that have, the siding has been getting beat up for over a century. Typically, we're ripping off wood siding and putting on cement board or hardy plank. The reason we're using cement board and hardy plank is A, it's engineered and it costs less than wood. In addition to, it has a longer lifespan. So the cost typically for our sidings costs us about $5 per square foot to reside a whole home. So again, on a 3,000 square foot house, it's gonna cost us about $15,000 to reside the whole home with hardy panel siding. So remember though, my costs are different than your cost. Each investor has different trades and different resources at their hand. You could also be in a more expensive market where it could cost you substantially more, or you could be in a more affordable market where tradesmen work for a little bit less. So the best two things that you can do to calculate your own costs is A, pull your historical projects. What it, look at what you've done, even if it's just one project or 20 projects, see what the core cost breakdowns are. Pull your old bids, find out what these install rates are, and then you can create your own sheet that speaks to your cost that you're paying. The second thing that you can do that will substantially help you when budgeting prior to buying that next project is interview and talk to your contractors. I don't go to my contractors and say, hey, how much is this gonna cost? What I like to do is have their cost already inputted in my sheet, and so when I'm making a budget, I can say, here's my budget, and it's based on what you told me. So the best thing that you can do is call your tradespeople and ask them these two simple questions. What do you charge per square foot? So if I'm talking to my plumber, I'm going, hey, if I wanna just put pecs in only, and replumb the whole house, roughly what is that gonna cost me on a per square foot basis? If he tells me it's five bucks a square foot, I need to count for that correctly. If he tells me it's three bucks a square foot, again, I gotta change my budget on there. And then the next question I wanna ask is, what is your install rate? Because those are your two main items, right? If we know they're putting in the pecs at three bucks a square foot, that's, that's handled. But then per fixture that they're putting out, you can actually count, if you have 10 fixtures in your house and you know they, they will charge you $50 a fixture, that's gonna be roughly $500 in labor costs. So by knowing their cost and what they're gonna quote you, it allows you to prep your budget accordingly, give them a detailed plan, and it also creates a situation to where you're not doing the back and forth with your contractor. The thing that I see investors make the biggest mistake on is they go to their contractor and say, well, how much does this cost? Or there's, they'll give them the scope and say, well, I only wanna pay this. And then the contractor says, I will, well, I will do it for this. And they do this back and forth middle thing, and they're just trying to meet in the middle. And there's no logic being behind this. It wastes time, it sets a bad precedence for how the rest of the project's gonna go. So if you already know their cost, you can give them your budget and say, hey, I did this based on what me and you talked about. That's gonna give you less variance and it's also gonna make your life way easier and way less negotiating with the next tradesperson. So what we're gonna do now is actually go out to one of our projects in Seattle, Washington. This is an old 1920s craftsman that we're restoring back to its original charm, but we've taken out all the mechanicals and all the guts. We're basically keeping this 1920s craftsman, but it's gonna be brand new on the inside. All right, we are on site. So right now what we're gonna do is review what we've done already. So currently we've actually been, we've actually owned this house for over 12 months, but the city kind of jammed us on permits. They're backed up with the pandemic. Things are not quite running quite efficiently. 
Um, but during that time, we were able to pull a demo permit and a couple temp permits, so we were able to keep working. So we put on our brand new presidential roof, like we talked about earlier, uh, knowing the cost on that. So we knew with the price point we were trying to achieve, we wanted to have a better curb appeal, and we had to upgrade that. So our typical roof cost is $300 a square, whereas this one was $500 a square. So it gives you an architectural layout. So let's take a look. Let's see what we've already done. So this house is 2,900 square feet or brighter, we're actually just shy of 3,000 square feet. So to reside this, we yanked all the stucco siding off, demoed it off, had it baited because it was full of asbestos as well. And then this is our tar paper, and this is costing us again five dollars a square foot to six bucks a square foot. So th this is a fifteen thousand dollar siding job. We're putting in lap siding to match the architectural design of what was there currently. As you can see, it's about ready to go. There's our stack of siding right there. The property has been fully framed. It's been rewired, replumbed. New HVAC has been installed. I'm gonna get my lockbox code open. As we make our way through the house, we opened up the whole the whole plan. We, we got a, a nice big living room, big dining room through here. We have a separate flex space off here. And then our kitchen's gonna wrap all the way around through here. As you can see, we've roughed in all new plumbing locations, uh, all new electrical locations, all new boxes, and everything's been permitted through the city of Seattle. So we're gonna make our way down to the basement and we're really gonna talk about those core items that, that you wanna figure out when you're prepping for your budgets. When you're looking at your rough-ins, it's really important to look at what the actual scope of work is, right? So if we have to replumb a whole 3,000 square foot house, that could cost us $10,000, and it also could cost us 15,000. These variables are really what are gonna impact what the cost is. When we have a basement house, typically we're spending that extra money. All right, so now we've made it to the basement. The basement is usually a lot of your variance in your rough-in costs, right? So. Earlier, we had talked about different types of plumbing, how it can be a $10,000 plumb job or a $15,000 plumb job. Items like this is what you gotta catch in your walkthroughs. So when we did our initial walkthrough of the house, we noticed that the sewer line came up right around about this part of the house. So therefore, we put in a new bathroom, we've had fall come out to our main sewer part, we have to inject that up. We gotta figure out how to get the sewage out of the basement at that point. That requires the injector pump, that's $1,500. So things like that, as you're doing your initial walkthroughs on your potential investment, you wanna notate. You wanna always look at the locations of your mechanicals and figure out, does your game plan meet that location? So if we knew we wanted a bathroom in the basement, which wasn't here before, we knew that our sewer line came up at this part, so when I was planning my budget, I could input the $1,500 in. So knowing these costs and knowing your plan is so, so important to your budget. Through here, we, we did a little linen closet, double vanity sink, toilet, and a tub, or, or tub and then toilet. Yes, yeah, so there's a full bathroom in here. Uh, and then we also backed off this side, we roughed in for a wet bar. So then people can have like a little mini kitchenette. So when you're doing your rough ends, you know, this was actually an upgrade that we put in. Things that we're thinking about as we're budgeting accordingly. This is where our wet wall is, right? So all our plumbing's already ran here. So to sister off a wet bar is actually a pretty simple thing and it doesn't cost very much. And so when I'm directing my plumber and I'm going, how much is it gonna cost to add in a wet bar? What I actually do is I go, hey plumber, I wanna add in a wet bar. Not a big deal, right? I'm gonna use the sister, the wet wall. And so he doesn't go, oh, to add a wet bar is gonna be two grand. Cause I'm going, hey, I already know where the plumbing is and I know where my location is. All you gotta do is add a couple little pieces off here because you're tying in the same drain lines. And so if you know the rough ends and you know the locations, when you're asking for the estimates, you can control the cost so much better. So as we kind of make our way through the basement, there's things like hot water tanks. So again, we talked about different types of hot water tank. So to put this in, it's gonna cost us, this is actually the old one that we got rid of, but to put a new one in costs us about $1,200. To go tankless would be about $2,500. So the reason, and we do go, we do upgrade to tankless quite often, but we had the extra space under a stairwell to put the hot water tank in, so that was an upgrade we opted for. So this is $1,200 to reinstall it through there. Uh, at the same time, because it's gas, we gotta make sure that we're directing our HVAC guy to run his gas piping down because of if we don't have that done now, that's gonna be a change order. And I remember on gas piping, it's 10 to $20 a linear foot, depending on who you're bringing out. So I gotta make sure that I'm not running it too far. 
So as we're planning locations of where mechanicals go to, those are things we're thinking about. It's not just, hey, this is the perfect spot for my hot water tank. It's also what's the most efficient, perfect spot, but the most efficient, cost-effective way. The less gas pipe we have to run, the cheaper the install is gonna be. So one thing to think about when you're roughing in your property is making sure you understand your electrical costs. Our ceiling height is only seven feet here, so we had to budget can lights accordingly throughout. That cost us about double. Then make sure you need the right kind of panels. So because of the, what panels we had to run, this was a budget miss for me. We actually had to install two panels because the power that was required in. The 200 amp panel wasn't gonna be sufficient. So each one of those panels cost me $2,000. That was a budget miss of two grand because I didn't budget accordingly. So we reviewed how much insulation could swing on your budgets. So things you wanna think about on the major cost drivers on insulation is whether you're gonna have bolted ceilings or not. If your ceiling's all fur down, you can do blow-in insulation. That's substantially cheaper. But as you can see in here, we have vaults coming up all the way around our huge master suite. It is extremely important to not jeopardize the character of your house because you wanna save money on certain trades. So because we're running our big master suite, we wanna have nice tall ceilings. So now what we're having to do is to up grade our insulation to rigid insulation. This is costing me $6,000 just for the ceiling, whereas normally it would cost me 2,000. So always check your insulation and what you need to do there. As you can see, we've rewired the whole master suite, and what we had to do here is because we didn't want the ceiling heights to be affected with our tall ceilings, we actually ran can lights all the way through. So our typical cost per can is about 50 bucks per can as we're counting them out. Or, um, and, but that includes the install as well. So instead of budgeting for just surface mount fixtures where we're going, hey, it's $25 per light to install, we just budget in 50 for each can light. So as we make our way to our master bathroom, this tells us a lot of what we've had to do inside of our plumbing. So as you can see, we roughed in each double vanity, the master's got a double vanity sink. So in this, when I'm budgeting for this, we have a full replumb, which is gonna cost me $3 a square foot for the replumb. Then we have our, our drain lines, and then we have two sinks, right? So you gotta always count out all your sinks. Each sink costs me about $50. In addition to, we have two faucets. So that's gonna be $25 per faucet, $25 to $50 per faucet to install. So that's why when you're counting out your plan and you're trying to budget, and you're really trying to get rid of your variance, make sure you count it all out. That's $100 just to install the faucets. Then we have P-traps that we gotta put in. That's another $100 or $75 per sink. So just for the install on that, it's gonna cost me $300 on these items. So there's are things you wanna think about if you wanna build the right budget sheet so you can perform these out. Also, the more you know about what you actually have to put in and count is the way you can actually double check your contractor's quote. So in this bathroom, we replumbed the whole thing. We have rewired it for all new can lights. We have our fans put in, which cost me roughly about uh, $75 per fan just to install, not including the materials. And then we come through through here and we're having a massive mud pan and a freestanding tub over here. So again, we got our valves are all roughed in, they're signed off on. The, just to install this valve was $50 to install each valve trim piece, right? Or just for the valve. But then I have to pay another $50 just to put in the trim. So this install piece cost me $100 just to get it roughed in and installed, not including materials. Here's our old drain line that they have not capped off yet. Look at it, it's running all the way through. So actually this is a, what you can see is this was all old cast iron, right? And so as you learn your projects and the more projects you do, you're gonna learn each house in each area has its own kind of unique trends, right? So we bought this, it's a 1925 built home. This is a very old structure. So the wiring was all knob and tube. All the, the plumbing was all galvanized. Most of it was corroded. Um, and then we had a lot of plaster in the house. So these old mechanicals. So when we walk into them, the things that we're paying attention to most is actually how much layout configuration we need to remove. Cause we already know that we can, we can, we need to rip out all the plumbing. We don't need a home inspector to tell us that. We don't need a contractor to tell us that because we know it's got to go. And because we know the cost of our plumber, we can actually budget accordingly without even bringing them out. So when you're working on framing and you're planning accordingly, you want to kind of figure out what your rough costs are for major structural reframe and cosmetic frame. So when we're budgeting, we usually budget for a cosmetic at five to six bucks a foot. That's gonna get a lot of two by four walls moved around. It's gonna maybe get us a couple beams. But in this house, we manipulated the whole floor plan. We moved two staircases. And then as you can see, we installed glue lamb beams 
throughout the whole structure because we changed and opened the whole flow up. So anytime I get in a house, I walk through and I don't like the layout, I know I gotta make massive modifications, that's where I adjust my budget up front. So, uh, and that's where I change it to an $8 uh, reframe out. So these are things that you can do in your general practices that will help you reduce your change orders by kind of knowing what the right plan is and then having two different frame calculations rather than just a one standard with a little bit of add-ons. I'm taking a second look at these windows and I just realized that the contractor upgraded us for free. What he was supposed to do was black on black vinyl windows. What he actually put in was black on black fiberglass windows. These cost about 50% more than our normal window. Uh, we had the contractor sign the scope of work. He signed the construction contract, so this is totally on him. But these windows are actually way nicer than I was anticipating. So, you know, not always do you get the short end of the stick on your rough ends. We actually probably just got like a free $5,000 upgrade in there. No wonder you so cranky. Thanks for watching our Rough End Roundup. So for more construction tips and cost overviews, follow me on jdaneflips on Instagram or on YouTube, Project RE, and make sure you click and subscribe to Bigger Pockets YouTube channel.